So you might have heard that a Cuphead animated show is currently in the works. I personally don't have the highest hopes for the quality of that show, but it did get me thinking about video games that could actually work pretty well as animated TV shows, or even just as short web series. And since I've been playing a ton of stuff on the Switch recently, I decided to whip up a list of games that I think would translate well into animation. None of these games are exclusive to the Switch, that's just the platform where I experienced them. I also wanted to note that I tried to keep a few things in mind when narrowing down the list. Probably the single biggest factor was the strength of the art direction in each game, but I also considered potential audiences and animation styles, and as such, I'll be making a lot of comparisons to other pre-existing animated shows. Let's get right to this borderline clickbait content. Super Meat Boy definitely isn't the most creative choice I could have done here. For one, the game already looks like a cartoon from the mid-2000s. It also has fun, short animated sequences throughout that all have a basic hero-villain dynamic. To me, a Super Meat Boy show feels like it would appeal to people who really like Invader Zim, Popeye, or something like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. That's mostly because Edmund McMillan, the guy behind Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac, seems to really like simple visual humor and an aesthetic that combines cute and slightly disgusting imagery. The show doesn't even need to have dialogue. Just let the visual gags do all of the work. Here's something I realized while putting together this list. Certain game genres seem to fit the TV format better than others, and roguelikes fit TV show structure extremely well. Like TV shows, roguelikes and roguelites are essentially episodic. There's variation in each run, i.e. each episode, but everything inevitably returns to a status quo, just like a lot of animated shows. There are gonna be a good few roguelikes on this list, and the very first one is Atomicrops. I don't know if you've heard of this one. It's a twin stick roguelike where you defend your crops from fanciful monsters. With enough resources, you can buy elaborate upgrades and even get married, just like in a lot of other farming sims. The game doesn't have much of a story, so the show would be starting from scratch in that department, but one of the most appealing aspects is the visuals, specifically the character designs. These character designs do a great job of implying character and depth without actually giving us any of that, but this would need to be a show with with a, dialogue, and B, an ensemble cast. Rather than just telling the story of a single farmer trying to fend off baddies, you could make the show about the entire town. That way, we get some fun character dynamics and a variety of settings and situations, rather than just a repeated conflict on a single farm. When I was trying to think of equivalent shows, I landed on Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Obviously, the subject matter is different, but I think Foster's did a great job of having all these creative character designs that made up an ensemble cast and they still got to go on big adventures even though everything eventually tied back to that one central location. <laughs> Next up is another roguelike, or I think it's a roguelite, but whatever. Hades, even though this game uses Greek mythology as a foundation, Hades itself has gotten so doggone popular that I could absolutely see a streaming service greenlighting a Hades series today. In fact, I think a Hades show could serve the audience that was super excited to watch Blood of Zeus, and then who watched Blood of Zeus and probably got disappointed. In fact, in my review of Blood of Zeus, I talked about how Hades did a much better job of making making genuine and likable characters out of dusty old myths. As for the premise, I think our characters could travel outside of the underworld. There could be adventures just on Earth or up on Mount Olympus. Zagreus is clever and funny, and I could easily see the showrunners adding some buddies who can come along for the ride, Teen Titans style. Maybe Sisyphus could be like the sidekick guy who's kind of funny, and Megara comes along against her will, but warms up to the group over time. Overall, this is an easy pick. There's so much to like about this property, and that's it, just, just do it. The idea behind this game is that you run an item shop in a town where almost everyone is an adventurer. They come to you for monster killing supplies, but at night, you go out on your own adventures, fighting guys and gathering items to sell to people the next day. The setting isn't the most original. It's a vague adventure game backdrop with dungeons and monsters and supernatural mysteries, but it has enough of a conceptual twist that you can start imagining interesting scenarios and character development. For some reason, I've been envisioning this one as an anime. 
I don't know if that idea will make sense to everyone, but it definitely makes a lot of sense to me. There are just so many anime shows that focus on a whole bunch of people who do the same thing. There's a show about school kids who are really good at cooking. There's a show about school kids who are really good at ping pong. There's a show about school kids who really like bread, and another one about kids who really like to gamble, and one about kids who play music as CG chibi animals. This one could really immerse us in the intricacies of dungeon crawling. There's tons of room for lore and needlessly complicated details about what makes a good dungeon crawler. I'd be into it, and to me, it sounds like it fits anime pretty darn well. It took me a very long time to play any of the Steam World games, and it took even longer to realize that the studio has just been cranking these out, all within the same universe, but across many different genres. In other words, they've already done a ton of world building, which would make it really easy to set up a few good characters and a solid premise. My comparison to pre-existing stuff here would probably be to something like Atlantis, the Disney movie. By the way, did it always have the subtitle? I feel like it was just called Atlantis when I was growing up, I don't know. You've got the steampunk tech, obviously, between these two properties, but you also have different specializations for different characters, and those are all very strong and simple. Oh yeah, and the underground exploration aspect is kind of a pretty strong tie, too. <laughs> A Hat in Time feels like a good pick to me because, in my eyes, a lot of this game reminded me of some of my favorite animated shows or even just live-action kids shows from back in the day. In tone, it reminds me of Rugrats or like Codename Kids Next Door, but it also just has tons of crazy kid energy. It really captures the fun of being a kid and having a really active imagination. So while I picture a Hat in Time show appealing more to younger kids, I think older audiences would still recognize the pure of showing a kid going on wish fulfillment adventures. I do really think it would make a great show, but I also just wanted to talk about it again. I love Going Under very much. I did a review that no one watched, and I don't see it brought up very often. You play as a young woman who just got hired as an intern at a startup company. Part of your job includes fighting the monsterfied former employees of the failed startups that have sunk underground. It's a fun rogue light, but it's also colorful and fun and funny, and most importantly for our list here, it tries pretty hard to critique startup culture and toxic workplaces. And I think that angle would be incredibly interesting in the context of an animated show. Television is no stranger to workplace comedies and satires, but I can't think of an animated one off the top of my head. Maybe Dilbert? But Going Under has a much darker sense of humor, as well as a fun pop art style. If everyone's so in love with something like Midnight Gospel for its art style, imagine a show that looks just as good or better, but with actual storylines and characters. <laughs> Sign me up! My number one pick for Switch games that should probably just be animated TV shows already is Flint Hook from Tribute Games. It's a good game. That's the first part of my argument. It's a very good game about a ghost space bounty hunter pirate with a super cool grappling hook who raids space pirate ships to grab loot and track down bounties. This is another game where the studio has already done a lot of work on world building and lore, and Flint Hook's lore is such a fun mix of sci-fi pirate stories does that genre have a name just like pirate pirate fiction and also like just a weird kind of retro futurism and just look at some of these character designs i would gladly purchase a stuffed animal version of every one of these or like a pin or a, a sticker or a cutting board i mean i haven't been able to find much flint hook merchandise i got a poster but I'm, I'm ready for more the show okay the show would be a mix of phineas and ferb and treasure planet that's perfect right you're sold already i can tell the stakes would be somewhere in between just lots and lots of fun space outlaw adventures. I think even the show Firefly could serve as some kind of tonal guideline. Actually, one of the reasons I checked out Midnight Gospel when it first came out was because I thought we were going to get fun space adventures based on the trailer, and we didn't at all. And ever since, I've just been hankering for some fun, relatively low-stakes sci-fi. If anyone would like to help me animate a fun sci-fi cartoon, by the way, feel free to reach out. I mean, why not, right? We got some free time. But in the meantime, I will continue to dream about the Flint Hook show that will never ever, ever happen. 
So that's the end of the list, but while I was recording, I thought of a mildly interesting point to add here. Along with a lot of other critics and just internet people, I've complained about how Hollywood and mainstream TV doesn't really seem that interested in creating new, original properties, instead choosing to drag out literally any IP with even a vague amount of name recognition. And I stand by that. I mean, I'm not into it. I think collective creative stagnation could signal some much larger problems. But adapting video games into shows, especially animated shows, just seems like a super easy fix. Production studios don't want to come up with brand new ideas from scratch. Well, no problem. The indie game scene has been doing that for years now. And just as an aside, let's see how many of the games on this list came from AAA studios. Right, there we go. This whole other industry is consistently introducing new, compelling fictional worlds and characters. Just use those. Streaming services have the money to fund these animated projects. Game studios would flip at the chance to have this level of mainstream promotion, and audiences will get stories that feel fresh, which they can still enjoy even if they never end up touching the game that it's based on. I don't have a lot of faith in giant video game movies, and that's a whole other topic, but I'm seeing so many indie games that put creativity first, and I think all that creativity meshes incredibly well with animation. To me, that's what animation is all about, creating visuals and atmospheres that aren't possible in live action. And that's it. I'm gonna do the YouTuber thing where I ask you what you thought, but only because I'm actually interested in hearing. Leave a comment with your whole list of games that are better than these or a specific game, or you can tell me that I can totally pull off a baseball cap. Any of those would be appreciated. And that's it. Bye.